Oh, I forgot to get a glass of water before I did this video. What am I going to do? Right, I have a lot of books. Um, Masters of the Universe. And um, the latest one was this omnibus of all of the DC comics. I even think they have the digital comic books in here, which I'm super excited. I mean, I knew once when I ordered this, this was a hundred and some dollars in Canada. It actually is up to, I think, $175 in Canada, but it went down at one point to like $115, so I decided to get it. Now, I collected the comic books. Well, every comic book, I've always collected every single Masters of the Universe comic book that ever came out. And I do have them. Some of them I have in my home, my home, my childhood home. But most of them, I think I might have gotten duplicates over the years in here. Maybe not all of them. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't have had the Star Comics and all of that stuff. But I did. I own every Masters of the Universe comic book ever made. And I'm going to pull these out. I know that in here, I actually, one of the, what I wanted to say was I actually stopped buying the comic books at the store, especially when I realized that they were doing the bound copies of the series. So instead, I just, instead of going every Wednesday to the comic book shop, I just waited for these to come out. So that's what I started doing in recent years. And before that I had a subscription and this is going to make an awful mess so I'm probably going to save this for the end of the video because I've noticed that all of the the plastic on all of these books has deteriorated and I did not know in my filing cabinet so yeah these used to come mailed to my door which I guess it's okay if I showed you my address just then because I don't live there anymore but oh my goodness little pieces of plastic are going everywhere I don't know. I don't know if that's plant-based or what, but that's all biodegrading. I also got... What else do I got in here? Lots of uh, special covers and everything from the entire series. Oh, so here is what the cover was based on. This was issue number one of the DC. And I guess there were a few other options in that series. I don't know. But, I mean, those are... I guess maybe I started out buying them from the comic book shop, and then I got myself a subscription. We'll take a look at those individual ones at the end. I've got magazines and all kinds of weird propaganda in here. This was from the Image series. I don't think Image is in there. So, yeah, it goes way back, but not too far back. Do I have the original DC ones in here? I thought I bought them. I know that I have at least a couple of those issues in here. But let's uh, let's take a look at these uh, big books. Now, out of the other books from... Well, I always forget the name of this company. Dark Horse. I am missing two of the Dark Horse books. I think only two of them. And I have to get those one day. Where's the smaller one? I don't know. Oh, here, over here. And then I've got Mastering the Universe, also. That's a, such a great book. This uh, really cool um, little comic book, she from Germany, which is kind of awesome. And, of course, I do have my mini-comics, which one of these books is all of the mini-comics in one, which I love that, where I have all of the mini-comics. But I do have my original ones, and here is a special one on top that I actually picked up when I was a kid and I went to Spain. So that's kind of an interesting one that I guess wouldn't be that popular. But I think what we really want to look at is this very new comic book, and I'm interested to see what is inside here. And it was so heavy, it even came with a warning on the box that came from Amazon that said that it was way too heavy to pick up. Hey guys, thanks for stopping in, Ranger and Batsy and Luna, and if I'm reading everybody's name correctly, and Joe... And Vanessa, 
Yeah, I like I like Masters of the Universe. Oh, look, look what else I got in here. I've got my stickers, and then I've got all of my maps from the toy line, from the collector Masters of the Universe classics line. I think I have them all together here. You know what else I have? I have every magazine. So those all came from the original Masters of the Universe magazine. And it had always, they came with posters. And I have every single one of those. So that is something that I don't have here. But I definitely have to get that here. And make sure that they're well protected. Oh, oh, oh. The cover's coming off the book. I'm always interested to see what the cover is underneath the soft cover i'm not a fan of jackets because of how tattered they get but they do put extra information on it so here is the cover under the jacket i also don't like opening up books remember i had a professor who taught me how to open up books and you open it from the spine and then you open up but i don't really want to open it up at all <laughs> in the middle and then you put a big crease in the spine i don't put no crease in this spine look at this book it's really interesting what they did i just saw this cover somewhere when i was rooting through my magazines here i also think that i managed to track down all of the exclusive covers actually that happened more often in the original the original, um, not the original, but the um, image comics. I remember I was able to, there that image. I knew that I recognized that. That's cool. And that's from the back of issue number six. Yeah, I used to get all the variant covers, but I don't think I did once. I started getting mailing orders and Apparently, it says on the back here that it's only, well, on the back of the jacket, it's only written by a couple, I think there's three actual um, story writers. So I didn't realize that only three people were writing all of these comic books. I just spit on it. The inside jacket has some other featured art. You know, I don't really, I can't say that I really like any of this art. I think if I had to choose, I would say that the cover is my favorite out of everything. I believe the digital comics are in here, and I really like the, hey, like this video if you're watching and you haven't given a like yet. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, Batsy. Hey, Benedict. Okay, so I guess... I guess you want to look inside. Okay, something that you don't see very often is there's black paper. And I think there's a special introduction or something in here. I don't recognize that artwork. I really enjoyed the digital comics. I remember reading them like I remember when it came out, I was um, living in New York at the time and I used to read them on the train whenever I was like going somewhere on the subway. But I think it's supposed to have a special, I'm wondering how they do the, how they divide it up into sections and if they put the covers in there. The Lost Knight. So I, I don't understand the order, perhaps, that it's going in, but we do have the table of contents. It has He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Then it has DC versus Masters of the Universe. Then it has He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Eternia has fallen. And then we have He-Man and the Inter uh, he -Man, the, Eternian, the Eternity War. Eternia, Eternity, Eternity War, um, He-Man Thundercats, and then we have the original 1982 to 1983 DC Comics Masters of the Universe. Okay, so I want to click to that, and you can see that that 
it was at the end, and I and I actually was right because that is where this turns into this comic book. These are where I'm really interesting, and I do have these original comics. Like I said, back in Nova Scotia, Canada, that is where I keep those. So that is awesome that they did include those into it. And there's three plus the Superman one. There was also this extra comic book that I have that talked about. Um, it was a DC and I think it was like a DC previews comic, which I also have. I don't think that is in here. So was that issue number? Well, it kind of looks like an alternate it doesn't look like the cover because it doesn't have a number on it, but I think it is. I really, uh, that, that comic art I really like, I guess because it's all retro-y and cool. And then, I don't know where they put the digital comics, but they're in here. Oh yeah, here's one of the covers, number two. And then there's special stuff at the end. Let's take a look at the special stuff at the end. Oh yeah, there's there's some weird stuff going on here. Hey, it looks like there's um, a variant cover gallery. Oh, that is so awesome that they did that. How's that paper quality? I see some I see some buckles in the paper there. Um, it seems to be. I don't really see it. They usually show that on cheap quality paper. This better not be hard on my book, what I'm doing here. I should get like a book stand. Kind of looks like the new Shiva cartoon. And then what does that say? That says He-Man and the Masters of the Universe behind the scenes gallery. Yeah, there are some warps in the pages here. So I think that's a sign of not the best quality paper. So there's some art. I hear a creak in the pages. It's pretty cool. I don't like this more modern artwork though, to tell you the truth. Look at that She-Ra. That ain't, that ain't the She-Ra you're used to. The Spara. I believe her name is it's the name they gave her when she was a Horde member. Comic book um, characters are always a little too sexy for their own good. Green Goddess has always been a favorite of mine because the first DC mini comics that came out, the ones that came with the, I'll show you those in a second with the toys. Just it's a total other world of Masters of the Universe, and it's the Masters of the Universe that I fell in love with was the original concept, and uh, Filmation kind of babied it up and juvenile it up. I can't say I really like the layout of this too. I don't know. It looks it looks amateur. Just being honest here. But it's still it's still a pretty cool book. Sorry, can't show you more. Um, the inside pages, as you can see, this black area that is the a very modern esque look of how the comic books looked, and that is kind of interesting that it had that feel all through it. I guess that is the style of many comic books nowadays that they have the black border opposed to the white border. But I do prefer a white border just because of its vintage feel. But at this point there was a little bright concept going on. And then there was some more black beginning. Orko became bad at one point, I remember in the series. I have not actually read all of these comic books, as you can see, I haven't even opened them. 
but that's cool. And I'm really happy to see that the digital ones are in here because it's not always easy to read them on your iPhone. Where did I put my glasses? Right here. But I, have, I do want to see where the digital ones are because that would be their first time in print. I'm sure I read that somewhere. If I'm mistaken and the digital ones aren't in here, you can definitely correct me in the comments below. But I believe that they are, even though I don't see it in the table of contents. But I'm sure I read it on the back of the book. Anyway, it's a huge book. This might take me a long time to read, but it would actually be fun read. I would read it really carefully. Okay, uh, now that I'm actually looking at some of the artwork is really great. Like, I really do think that looks pretty epic and awesome. So it's not totally a mess up. A <laughs> mess up. But maybe I will just read these ones, too, to protect this book. But, I mean, what's the point of having a book that you don't read? But let's take a Okay, let me show you how why I fell in love with Masters of the Universe. And most Masters of the Universe collectors do not agree with me. These are my original comics from when I was a kid. But this, this would have been the very first comic. And... These were made by DC, but they're more of a storybook than a comic. It's funny that they called them comic, but I think they had to pump out these so quickly that they had to do it in this style. They call them comics, but they're more of a storybook. But the artwork, this is what made me fall in love with Masters of the Universe. I first saw my brother's friend had a Skeletor that his father bought him. And he, he's like, he had a divorced parents and his father bought him this toy. And, um, and I saw it at his house and I went, what is that? And it was the coolest toy I've ever seen. This muscular skeleton with all these barbaric features and uh, like a, a staff. And he had all of these accessories and he looked so awesome. And then when I saw the comic book, I mean, it's just, it's got that, it's it's early 80s, so it has that 70s psychedelic feel, and I just loved it, and the art is so fantastic. That is what I like. And even these newer comic books, they were pretty sweet, too. So I think I'm definitely more a fan of the comic book comic book, like this collection of all of the mini comics, which I still haven't opened yet. But let's, and you know what else I have here? So this was the first um, Dark Horse book to come out. Look, and I haven't opened up this one either. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I still have two more of these books to get, which I was kind of waiting for them to go down in price on Amazon. But I have this book in a deluxe version that I guess is still in here. We could do, we could take a look at that too. Oh. Have to lift these because I don't want to scratch them or anything on the desk. Oh, they're so heavy. So this was a special release of the original Dark Horse book. And it's still in this box and still in its plastic case. So that's really cool that I have this. Look at this drawbridge that opens. I think there's something behind there. You can see a picture of He-Man. And it's got probably a special lithographer something in there but that's the art of he-man and the masters of the universe yeah never never opened or looked at that never opened or looked at any of these things but like i said the thing that i want to open the most would be this mini comic book and just read every one of these original mini comics
you should open them and enjoy them. Yes, I want to. I just don't want to open them in a crowded place. So what I would do is I would make sure... I should put on a Masters of the Universe t-shirt for this review. Um, I would make sure that, like, I have a separate room once I get my life together. I know that you shouldn't wait to get your life together. But... I, I think that my life will eventually get together. There's a big scratch on my table now. Um, and then I will, like, you know, have make sure that the bed or wherever I have them or the desk is totally... This desk is only a foot long, so the place is big enough, and I can sit down, and I can open it up, and I know that everything's protected, and I'll just make sure my hands are all clean, and I'll flip through the pages and love it and read every book. So that will happen. Let's uh, take a look what's going on in here. It was really hard. I think they had a really hard time. And this happened over and over again with Masters of the Universe throughout the years. Starting over the series. It never continued. They always had to start the series. And then they had to end it. Something would happen. And they would... Uh, all these obstacles. Masters of the Universe has come up with so many obstacles over the years, making the next motion picture movie, which they wanted to do. Apparently now it's on the go and it's in pre-production, but um, I'm not holding my breath. So I guess this would be the very first Masters of the Universe comic book because that is what they put on the jacket. This art, I definitely don't recognize, but it's probably from the origin of He-Man because Battle Cat is attacking He-Man, and I remember that is what happened, and there was some controversy oh, controversy over that. So yeah, there's. I even have my original receipt for number one, and then this would have been number two. That's an interesting cover. I kind of like that. It's a lot of, um, I'm a very classic guy, so I tend to probably like old school. They, uh! Good thing I've got protection on these ones. I like old school art. This stuff, oh, there's that scene again. That's number five, number six. So for some reason, I have them up to number six, and then and then I have these ones, and I um, think I better do this around some, I might just have to vacuum clean this stuff out, but let's see what's going on here. This plastic on these is all gone crazy, wacky, deterior, deteriorated. This is really, this is a really cool, like, insert in here. And this is number 19. This is just some plastic. Here, I better find some kind of garbage. This might not even be plastic. It might be, like, made with rice or corn or something. I've never seen that happen before. It's not like I kept them in daylight or anything. Let's make really bad YouTube. I'll also get myself a glass of water. Don't think anything broke there. I think everything's okay. Oh, oh, it's, it seems hot in here today for some reason. Okay. There's no water near the comics. You are right. Okay. So... I don't even know what package that came out of. I have no idea what's going on. Okay. So I guess that really doesn't have anything to do with it anyway. This is number 19, and this plastic has not deteriorated. 
This is number 18, and this plastic is rotten. No. Oh. It's all sticking to me and stuff. What? I've never seen anything like this. I guess I should open up this one, too. I'm not making a mess, Steven. Let's see here. So it looks like they changed their plastic at the very last one to come in my subscription. And I was actually surprised at how well these came. Like they, it was like, why would you get a comic book in the mail? It made no sense to me. But I was really surprised how they never actually got bent. Not one of them was bent when I bought them or ordered them in the mail. So that is what the style of art looked at like around um, January 2015. That's 19, 18, 17. Same old Scooby-Doo stuff. Here's an Attorney in War ad. Maybe 19 was the very last one. Before Attorney in War. It's, it's like sticking to my hands. I guess I'm not going to be able to get rid of the, all of this plastic ever. And here is cover 16, the Gotham advertisement on the back. That is so different. They made it like a Western. A Western. I say Western. They really push in the Teen Titans and the Scooby Doo. What a mess this is. Look at this crazy art on number 15. It does say, please do not bend. Oh. Just getting more and more, more and more staticky. I guess I was just ordering them to read. And you know what? I think I was also embracing the digital comics at the time. So I was really happy that you could get comics on the, and then you could save like, like, I didn't really care. Like, I was never going to sell these. They were never going to be for me to sell. So I don't think I really cared that they were going to get bent. And I was also getting the digital versions at the same time at one point. And I was happy with that because, you know, you could just carry around an iPad and read the comic book. And I kind of still want to do that, like, to have them. Like I said, like, if I am on a bus or a train, I can just pull up it on my phone and look at it. It's number 13. I don't know if I showed you this one. I didn't, that she -Ra looks pretty cool. I noticed the plastic had done this a few months ago. I was like, what's going on here? So I've been wanting to go through this and clean these up, but it's not actually being cleaned up. I don't know if I should have a vacuum cleaner standing by at the same time. Here's a good one. Green Goddess, one of my favorite characters, just because she was featured in 
the original comic book. That is kind of inappropriate for children. I think this series is probably inappropriate for children. All right, here we've got a different Scooby-Doo. It's really pushing the Scooby-Doo with the Masters in the Universe. I guess it's the same time period and everything. Jason is a big kid, adorable. No, I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. I'm a man. And um, here's number 11. And I think that's the one that I was looking at where I like the art. I guess I really like this comic book artist more than other modern comic book artists. I kind of like this art too. I remember with the Imagine series that Val Staples really tried to get a lot of like big name, unique um, cover artists. So there was some pretty awesome ones. And then he would hunt down vintage artists too. So there was some pretty amazing art on the Image Masters of the Universe series. Which we'll probably take a look at once we un look at all these plot and take all the dirty plastic off these ones. Number 10, or most of the dirty plastic. Seems I'll be taking this off for many years to come. Just falling apart. Still that Scooby Doo ad all this time. What um, month are we down to? We're at 2014 in February is when this one came out. And that just looks like a scary snake. Serpent of some sort. Maybe I should have like a wet cloth to wipe my hands off. I can't. Sticking everywhere. Oof. This one, on this, uh, they used a different type of plastic on uh, January. So these were coming out every month back in the beginning. Now I'm not so sure how often they come out. I believe that the series must have just finished if the Omnibus came out. I don't know if I know how to say Omnibus prob prob probably. They got Earl Norman, who drew comics in Wizards and Warriors. Earl Norman is an amazing artist and did many great Masters of the Universe artwork back in the day. I think they even got Boris, which is a big part of probably why I got into Masters of the Universe, because I used to have a lot of Boris posters on my wall. And... And the they kind of based the whole series on that. Masters of the Universe looked so much like it came right out of Boris because it was Barbarian meets Space. And that's the kind of thing that he did back in the late 70s. That is number eight with good plastic. But that was just that one time that they had some kind of plastic that was better quality. And then we're back to this crumbling plastic for number seven and this artwork I'm liking I think that looks pretty good oh, oh no oh no this is gonna be this is gonna be bad gonna be real bad to clean up okay some better plastic again this is what I assume I assumed I actually could keep them all in their package I think I was gonna keep them wrapped in their plastic so that they would be protected forever and ever Finally, a different ad for number six for some action figures from DC Collectibles. Here's the ad on the back. 
Oh, haven't been showing you the ads on the back. It's an interesting artwork. We had Despara there. More of the same. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, what a mess. And then number five. Something happened to Shiva there. I don't know. Maybe she got turned back into a horde member at some point in this series. Batman Superman ad. Ads are always fun, especially of really old comics. This is number four. We're doing the countdown. That, that, work, that artwork is okay. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. It was the time of that modern Superman. And then we got some horde troopers hiding in the forest there. Or maybe they're destroyed. Maybe that's a horde trooper graveyard. Walmart and Superman. And there's Despara again. For number two. And then what do we got going on here? This is number one. Oh, sweet. And I was so happy that they did give the variant cover to the toy. So, okay, that's what happened. So I was, that was, so this was the very beginning of the series. So I was happy to subscribe and get this variant cover with the toys on it, which is kind of really cool. And then I went out and bought the number one. Where did I get this at? It's Midtown Comics in New York. And then that would have been number one of the regular release, I guess. It's usually more than just two variants, so I don't know if I got them all. But I did imagine I did um, I did manage to get them all for the image ones. Oh my goodness! It's all this little plastic all stuck to me all over the floor. But I'm still gonna keep going. And show you more of these comics. Oh, that's gonna. I'm gonna be cleaning this up for years, probably. Oh man, I don't know what else I could have done though. I mean, I could have opened them up when I got them. Could have waited till spring. Open these up outdoors. Oh, you. Can't even imagine the mess that's happening here. I'll see what I can do with a vacuum cleaner later, but let's clean this off. And there's still all kinds of little flicks amongst these comic books. Which sword don't you like? You don't like how this sword looks? That sword looks good. This sword don't look so good. Okay. So maybe the last one was number 18. Wonder if there's any way to check. What if I look in my new book? <sighs> Which I'm gonna get all of that plastic in my new book. I checked the table of contents. Did they number them? 
I guess I could also look at my small ones. I could count them. It doesn't, they're not numbered. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. But I don't think that's it because that they have weird names like Orko and She-Ra. So a better way to look would probably be to look into one of these comic books. It's not Attorney in War. It's not DC. It's not she It's not He-Man. It might be He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. We saw that. Volume 3. Volume 2. Volume 1. So is that what happened? It's too hard to figure out. Because of all the different series. Oh, and now I have these mixed up. One, two, three, four, five. And they released these ones. I think I've ordered the new one, the new series, which is currently out, but I don't think it's currently out anymore. I think that's when they released this one because it's just completed so that they could put the last series, which is called... Um, the, oh, no, just He-Man versus the Thundercats. They don't have the last one in here. What? Oh, but it is released in a hardcover because I do have it, I do have it pre-ordered. It's, um, DC something versus Masters of the Universe. It's really hard to keep track of it. It's really hard to keep track of this stuff. And like I said, I stopped buying them at the comic book store and started just buying the bound paperbacks but the good thing about the last one is that they made it a hardcover so uh, that's going to be really cool to see the very last series and who knows if they'll do another series i guess now we're waiting on what the movie shall bring i guess i don't know if there are plans for another comic book this is kind of this might be a perfect time for me to doing be doing this video Okay, so are the, here are the Attorney in War ones. Oh, so you know what? That has to be the end. Because now I'm getting into Attorney in War. And I still had a subscription at the time. So, and I bought an alternative cover from Silver Snail in Canada. And this series came out around 2015. Another toy cover, which is cool. These ones I don't have to open because they're not falling apart. Number two. And number three of the Attorney in War. Hey, you're all early morning, Gray. This live has been pretty long. I guess that's why you were able to catch it and very late for me normally to be doing a live. And then this cover. That's interesting art. In... Maybe that is all the Attorney in War. Maybe there was only five issues, or maybe that's when I stopped buying. But I don't know if that's true, because then I have these ones that I actually was still buying, the loose ones at the store. It got really confusing, and I don't know if I knew when they were coming out anymore, and they were so infrequent, and I don't know when I stopped. But that's number one of DC Universe versus Master Universe, and another alternative cover. I have no recollection of buying these, but obviously I was going to the comic book shop and buying them. So you get one with DC, and you get one with uh, Master's Universe, and I believe that they go together. Yes. Yes, they make, they make a scene together, which is cool. Number two. Number three with Wonder Woman. Why Why are two good sides fighting each other, though? That's what I don't know what's going on. I bet, guess I should probably read this and find out. Superman being taken over by the dogs from the Ghostbusters. 
The dogs from the Ghostbusters are big. This is like, that's Zool. And then, I guess that was the end of the DC versus. And then we have some origins. So they just would call these number one. And that was a He-Man origin. And then we had the origin of Skeletor. And I think these came out interspersed. So the years would be all mixed up. And then we had, oh, I've got two origins of Hordak. I probably visited New York and wasn't sure if I had them because you can never find doubles in Canada, but I could always find them like at Midtown Comics. But I think I got a duplicate by mistake because I didn't recognize that one. And I was at a time where I wasn't sure what I had bought and what I hadn't bought. And then, what is next in here? What else do we got in here? Oh, the Shadows of Darkness. I don't know what this one, I think this is also a, a I forget what, what you call them when they stick them all together. Oh, it's an image one. So yeah, Val, Val and Emiliano are responsible for that. What else do I got in here? I got a, a coloring book, a classic one. It's like mint. I don't remember where I found that, but I think I found it in more recent years. And it was in pristine condition. In more recent years, I mean in the past <laughs> 10, 20 years. And what else do I got in here? I got my card collection. This was kind of a disappointing card series because they didn't have like special figures in here. They just had screen captures from Masters of the Universe. These are probably the best two in the series, if you ask me. We added voice bubbles to them like comic books. But the back looks really cool where you can see the gum, where the gum was in the package is not cool, but interesting nonetheless. There's a little collector's checklist. It's a cool little thing I got in there. What else I got in here? One of the only classics figures that I opened because they had extra stock and they wanted to like thank the subscribers for all of the mistakes they made or something. And they sent random figures to people. So it was one of the only duplicates I had. So I was able to open it. And then I got some kind of 30th anniversary poster. I don't know where I got that from, probably from ordering San Diego or power con exclusives. They would, put these stickers in every once in a while so you could put them on your cards. You could put them on your mock figures so and make them represent whoever you wanted them to represent. All right, more comic books in here. Um, oh, I, I think I already showed these ones. These were the very first ones one two three four five six wait a minute oh wait that's right because they started the series and then they had to start it again and then they had to start it again and then they had to start it again actually that happened more with imagine image comics i'm sorry i think i'm checking to see if this is the same series no it's why it's so confusing because they've been so many series and they had to start over and then things weren't right and i don't know let's see what's going on here so here we have um cge when it was mv creations so that definitely was a val staples jobby that was number one. So that was bringing back Masters of the Universe. 
another alternative cover and they would show on the back of the cover what was coming next week so that's pretty cool and number two and number three wait i don't know if this happened i don't know if um mv creations took over after image or they continued on when it went to image i totally forget now i guess i could look at the year which which comic book captured um would you say captured the feel of mutu the most um you know what i haven't read them all i haven't read any of them basically but i do i kind of enjoy all of the comic books from what i've read um they seem to be the stories seem to be pretty good and they're all different worlds the thing about masters of the universe is there are so many different incarnations wait how is that number eight so we went from mv creations oh image image six when did that switch over okay mv creations number four mv creations number five I don't know if I have these in the wrong order. And then did it switch over? Oh, no, MV Creations number six. This isn't what it's previewing on the back. And then we changed to Image Comics. Okay, no. But then, I don't remember this happening, but it obviously happened. It was a long time ago. So they previewed the next comic, and it then changed to Image Comics. But MV Creations was still making them, I guess. And then eight. And then I think the series ended. And then oh, I... <laughs> it's so confusing. Yeah, no, I, I definitely don't have enough. I don't... I can't say that... I don't have enough um, experience reading the comics to say which one I like best. But from what I have read, the little... I think they're all pretty good in their own right. And the comics are for an older audience anyway. So the stories are all pretty much better. Probably the star comics weren't that good. I don't know. Um, th that was a long time ago, but I'll have to, I'll have to revisit this. I'll have to read all my comics again. And then these were just origin comics again, back in the MV creations. Look, some of these are image. Some of these are, MV. I like to use the magazine so I could use these uh, binder ones instead of using just the plastic envelopes. I prefer to do my comics that way. And I also like to put uh, the cardboard in the middle so you can see the back. And there's a Rise of the Snake Man series in here. Rise of the Snake number one. And then we have the Rise of the Snake number two. And then Rise of the Snake Man number three. I guess I don't know that much about comics. I think probably comics do start over all the time. But I don't know if that really happened. All right, so here's the very first. I believe this is a preview comic from Image of Masters of the Universe, so it doesn't have a number or anything. This is pretty, this is a pretty special comic, actually. Where I think it's, oh yeah, it's, it's, black, it's done in black and white and not colored. So I really like this. I enjoyed um, Emilio's um, artwork, Emiliano. Like, it was kind of modern, but it was pretty cool. He's pretty good at recapturing anybody's style. But his own, it definitely has this, like, Euro feel, which would make sense from him being Italian. Yeah, so I uh, that 
this comic made me really excited about the series because if you know me, I really like simple things and that black and white, simple drawn artwork was pretty cool. And that seems to be in here. So this must have been the very, very beginning, but it couldn't have been the very beginning. I think it was the very beginning because this was the very beginning, but why are some MV creations, maybe it was image, then it went to MV creations, then it went back to image again. Like it would be as simple as me looking at the dates on these. This was from November with no year on it. What? I see no year. Another number one. Another number one. If I'm correct, this was the very first series. Oh, it says image. Oh, image. I don't know. Another number two. I think this was the very first because they made so many variant covers. Number three. And I would buy them all. Another number three. And they would continue to the back too, which was crazy epic. Number four. And another number four. And number five. No, that's an, and now we're back. Now we're back to start another series. So number one, another false start. And then another number one with Dolph Lundgren on it. Number two. Another number two. And number three. And another number three. Oh, this one's a holographic cover. Foil cover. Real cool. The backwood skeleton. Did I show you him? That's awesome. That one I would frame. And then that's a really cool sorceress. Number four. And another number four. So many duplicate covers. They knew how to make money. Number five. Number six. And I believe that was the end of that series. For six comics, they sure got a lot out of it. I've got some Masters Universe stickers from the 20,000 collection, 2002 collection. I got some other stickers in there. And I got some kind of old coloring book that I guess I put in there as well. It's a whole other style of Masters of the Universe back in 2000. Some stickers from my toys. You know, I don't like to put the stickers on my toys. I have a whole 2000X um, toy collection. That is a video that I also want to show you. Stratos is more of his card art. I think I bought Trapjaw on eBay and before they re-released re them. So they somebody gave me the card too. I think I saved all of my cards as a kid. I'm not sure if I still have those. And then at one point, I made um, plastic laminates of all of the figures that I didn't have in my collection. Just because I really wanted them. So I blew up all of the characters. Most are from the very last series so that I would have, you know, something to put on the shelf or look at that looked like the figures that I did not have. These are the most expensive figures, I guess, because at this time, that is when everyone stopped collecting Masters of the Universe. 
So I'm really happy that Super 7 is re-releasing them, but I cannot pay $60 for these. So I won't, still won't be getting them. Spike Or was a guy that I never had. And then, oh yeah, I used to put this on the shelf. This used to freak people out when they would see this on my shelf. Because it never was made. And I used to just like put it up back and people would see pictures and think that I had an Eldor and whatever his name is. So, Fisher, Fisher Price, what? Ask, ask about toddler toys. So back in the 2000s, Bratz, and there were Fisher Price ones. That's awesome. And uh, that was before I was collecting Fisher Price toys. Um, and then there was a Masters of the Universe series of toys. And I do have a couple sets of those, which I totally want to review again. I saved all of my blind bag packages. And then here is a checklist for the toys. Like I said, I have a set of at least one set of these open and sealed, which I will review. I've never reviewed. So that's something that I will do in the future. The Masters of the Universe logo. What else do we got in here? Okay, so when the Masters... Oh, here's something special. This is Val, Val Staples actually sent me this because it was one of the comics he was working on that he did the coloring for. And this artwork... Okay, so if you want to tell me what kind of artwork I like, this I really, really like. Look, he signed it. Awesome. He's such a good guy. I met him at uh, Toy Fair one year. Such an incredible guy. I used to spend a lot of time on there before my toys and before YouTube and before I got so mad at Masters of the Universe. That was my community. Now YouTube is my, you guys are my community now. I used to go there a lot and uh, talk to everyone. They were my friends. All right, so what do I got in here? Um, some Castle Grayskull instructions. At one point, I had five Castle Grayskulls because they were on sale at Walmart in Canada, and I meant I bought five of them, or every time because they were five bucks. So I bought as many Castle Grayskulls as possible. So I have a lot of weapons and stuff, but right now I just have one of those. Which I'm not a big fan of the design of um, the 2000X stuff, but we'll rehash that one day when I look at all of my 2000X collection. I have every figure, every statue. Um, I'll probably sell that stuff, I guess. This is number three of the original. Oh, no, that's a star. That is a Star Comics. That's cool. I do have all of these. I think I just picked this up at a comic book show one day when I saw it because it was really cheap. And I do have the whole collection. And look, here is an original Mad Balls ad. That's what, This brings me back. This art. This art is beautiful. I love that art. Here's a cool little collector card. I don't know what that was from. Probably from one of the figures. And then I have some mini comics. I think these mini comics came with figures that I ordered online from eBay. I think I just didn't want to put them with my other ones. Um, looking at the back of this... Looking at these these um, prototype pictures and the cross cell pictures, this I get this like nostalgic feeling when I see these. I'm like, oh man, that is so cool. I just love how they were photographed and painted. Some of them, sometimes they're photographed. Sometimes they're actually paintings of the toys, and they're just so beautiful and so perfect. Man, those are awesome. I think pretty much, I think they're always paintings of the toys and they're done so well. And then I've got a few like um, instructions and 
books, and this is mostly for the 2000X stuff. There was some pretty cool 2000X stuff. This definitely, there were flight packs. I'm definitely going to have to revisit this. Really cool bat flight pack and really cool falcon bat pack, backpack, eagle flight pack is what they called it. Yeah, I'll definitely have to revisit the toys. So, yeah, that is all of the, like, instruction guides for those toys. I thought I had the whole series of these. Maybe, maybe there's two in here. But I only see one of three and two of three. Um, I thought I had copies of all three of these. But perhaps I don't. But I do have them back in Nova Scotia, Canada. I do have the whole... I have every comic, for sure. And then some. But just ones that I found at comic book shops over the few years. This is um, Masters of the Universe Bible, written by Michael Halpern. Halpern. Which is really cool. And I downloaded this and printed it out from He-Man.org. Which... I don't know if I've ever read it, but this is the original Bible. So that's so, so, so sweet. And definitely would like to take a read of that again. I'm pretty sure I did read that. But it, this is, it's so cool to have like original documents. What else do I see? He-Man.org stamped. I believe you can read all of this stuff online there now. See what else? Oh. What else do I got in here? So back when Masters of the Universe returned, I used to get every single like comic book or toy collector comic book that featured the toys. Oh, look at this. Look at this Optimus Prime on the back here. That's pretty sweet. So anything that was about Masters of the Universe, I used to buy the magazine to look at. So there'll be like previews of what's coming out with the toys. He-Man Faker toy something. Toy offer, which I guess I would have sent out because I did manage to get him. And then something about He-Man Uncensored in this one. And then the new He-Man. So when this was one of the best looking He-Man, Snake Armored He-Man in the series. So I think they were celebrating that. I was only collecting Masters of the Universe at the time. There's so much in here that I probably would appreciate now. I really like these Clerks toys actually when they came out. I kick myself for not buying those. And then some more stuff. There's the Snake Tila when she was out. And then, oh. Then, wow, the toys, the hot toys of summer. Is that what this was? Toys of summer, the season's hottest collectibles. That she was something else. I do have her. Um, kind of lady of the evening look. There's obviously something big news, uh, big news of Masters of the Universe in there. That's when I would buy these things. Um, I don't know what's going on. I guess there's a big bio on Skeletor and how bad he is in that one. And then. And then I keep all of my, I have all of my receipts from all of um, the Masters of the Universe things that I bought. And I used to keep them all together from all my toys, even postage stuff. These are all the import fees, actually, that I had to pay when the toys would come. I guess, I don't know, so just receipts of all of the Masters of the Universe toys that I bought. 
I wonder if I could write those off now that I review the toys and haven't done my taxes. And here are all my digital river packing slips from all of the Masters of the Universe classic toys that I bought throughout the years. <laughs> Tens of thousands of dollars on these figures that I don't even like. Unbelievable. But I think I'm going to get it all straightened out. I'm going to figure out what's good, what's not good. <laughs> and here's the cover of me on a magazine. Back in 2012. With really bad hair. Don't look at it. What the what? This is my taxes. There's one other thing in here. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Let's see here. All right, there's some irony here. Because we've got a Fisher Price Planet Heroes, which is a great series, which is what is going to happen to me now. Because um, in the recent years, um, in just this past month, in um, Rescue Heroes have been re released. So that is a Fisher Price line of toys. Um, Planet Heroes was kind of an offset of that. But these are 5.5 inch figures. They're probably going to retail. They're not these ones, but the Planet Hero ones are, I'm sorry, but the Rescue Hero ones are like construction workers and firemen and police officers and stuff like that. And I will be buying those for sure. Those are probably going to have a price point of $15 each opposed to the $60 that it would cost me to get a 5.5 action figure from um, Super 7. So... Yeah, Masters of the Universe is out and Rescue Heroes are in because that is what my budget can afford. Um, good night, Batsy. You make sure that you study lots at school. I'm going to be done with this video now anyway because I've definitely made such a mess. And I'm just cleaning up. This looks like it was back when um, Fisher Price used to sell toys online to Canada. I loved buying toys from Fisher Price. Dot com. I got so many great deals and they had great sales. And there's also ads for the Mattel store that we used to have in Canada. All these things are gone now, which is so upsetting. You can't buy toys from Fisher Price online and you can't buy toys from Masters of the Universe. But what you can do is you can buy toys from Toys R Us and Babies R Us. So that's sweet. Because they do have, I guess this address is old, but. Toys R Us still exists in Canada. We're very happy about that. These old magazines might be fun for me to look at. Fisher Price magazines. Probably lots of cool Imaginex things in there. But those aren't something that I should probably be keeping. All right, that's all my stuff. If you want to see greater details of anything, or if you like this collection and you want to see the other books, I do have to find the other books. I mean, if you want me to show you the books better, if you think you should buy the books, or I don't know. I don't know what I should sell here. If you want to buy any of this stuff, also let me know. Uh, even though I don't know if I'll sell it, I, I, I need to sell all of my classics. I need to say, sell all my 2000X because I never really liked them anyway. I was just supporting the brand. I really, really like the new Super 7 vintage style ones, but I can't pay the prices that it costs to get them to Canada. Maybe if I visit the States and I find them in the store, I will pay $20 a figure. Even I'll pay $20 US a figure but uh, I can't pay 50 or $60. And that is how much it's going to cost to get one if I'm to order them from Canada after shipping and 
brokerage fees. That's just how it is. Um, all right. So I, I love you guys. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. I hope you like this video. We'll see you next time. My voice is gone.